nothing in the world is more important than the patient that's on the chair right now. We are joined today with Dubai's most recognized celebrity dentist, Dr. Mohammed Naji. Even though you work with celebrities, you're also like a dentist celebrity. Am I? Well, okay. What's your patient care philosophy? Every patient is a VIP. We do work with a lot of celebrities and, and the VIPs and politicians, etc. Yeah. I use the same protocol with my regular patients. Tell me like a memorable moment being a dentist. I had a patient that finished her treatment, got up, looked at the mirror and... The dentist ever mess up? No clinic will stand still over 26 years if mm -hmm. they mess up. It's uh, mentally exhausting. Imagine working in a workspace in centimeters or yes. millimeters all day long and then you go back home, you're just like... Pulling like I'm giving drugs, ah, nah, nah. I'm a pop star, not a doctor. <laughs> He's a doctor. I'm both. So without further ado, I'm Redin Jeromey. Wherever you are in your life or wherever you're going, whether financially, spiritually, or for your health, I hope you're on your way. Now let's get into it. Dr. Mohammed Naji. Mr. Raiden. How are you? I'm good, man. How's it going? So good seeing you. Thank you for uh, picking me up. Today. Of course. <laughs> of course. And you know, usually I get anxiety when I go to the dentist, but today was different. Yeah, I mean, so I didn't get teeth anxiety. were not involved. Yeah, now, exactly. Now you're in my world, <laughs> yeah. okay? For all the pain you put me through, I'm going to put you in pain today now. It's my uh, trust me, I never put you through any pain <laughs> and I never will. <laughs> and we are going no anesthetic today. Okay. No aesthetics? No, is that what it's called? Anesthetic? No, when it no. makes it numb? Yeah, anesthetics. Anesthetic, yeah. yeah, yeah no yeah. anesthetics. Yeah, no anesthetics. Okay, though. sure. So it's going to be painful. No, I'm kidding. We, we, we I just... hope I'm not going to be the patient today. Let's yeah, see. That's, I'm the doctor. That's going to be the case. Yeah. <laughs> today, I'm the doctor. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> Are all dentists rich or is that a misconception? Well, uh, about that, um, no, I mean, no, not all dentists are rich. No. No. Okay, so that, is that a misconception? See, mom, uh, I told you, you want me to be uh, a dentist? Trust no, me, mom. No, dentists are rich. Trust me, mom. He might be making much more money than we are right now. I know. <laughs> Probably not. But I don't get to. I get to not work. That's that's yeah, the. Yeah, yeah. How's your back, by the way? Because when I go to the dentist, I don't listen. Nobody has been to the dentist more than me, and I take care of my teeth. I brush, I floss, I do all that. But I did karate. My dad's a black belt in karate, he's a sensei. And I watched a lot of Bruce Lee movies and Bruce Lee had his hands down. Yeah. So I've got many implants, many crowns, many um, uh, bridges, mm -hmm. uh, butterfly bridges, resin bonded bridges, mm -hmm. I know all of them. Mm -hmm. um, so no one's been to the dentist more than me. And I always see my, my dentist in, in Australia, he's working on me and I'm like, how's your back? Like three hours like this. You know, uh, um, there, I can't remember the exact number, but um, uh, there's, uh, I think, 70% of dentists or yeah, 60% of dentists retire before the age of 45 due to backache. Wow. Yeah, so it's a very common problem, back okay. and neck. Yeah. Um, and that's why I try my best not to skip my gym sessions. Yeah. Uh, not to just stay in shape, mm. but it's for actual medical purposes, yeah. you know, like because after a long day, you know, bending down and your yeah. neck is like in a very awkward position all the time, yeah. you need to stretch that out. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was actually going to say that's not going to happen for you because you're, you obviously go to the gym and... I try my best. And, yeah, I try yeah. my best. And your posture's good. Well... Your posture's <laughs> better than mine. Is it? Um, so, yeah, for someone, I mean, I can imagine how bad my posture would be if I was a dentist doing that. Yeah, I'm just I on mean, my phone. You're going to be in all kinds of weird positions, yeah. man. It's just <laughs> crazy <Jesus>. stuff. <laughs> Are your hands insured? Very good question, man. Mm. Just the other day I was thinking about it. No. They're not insured? No, but I'm working on it. I gotta take care of them eventually. Right? That's, that's, those are the money makers. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I know, that's why I was wondering. If this you're... one actually in specific. <laughs> that one? Yeah, right handed. Oh, uh, because, yeah, yeah okay. The yeah. other hand is just there to support. But like sure. this, this does the sure, magic. Sure. Yeah. sure. <laughs> do you do surgery with machines or no, it's all by hand? Like, I, I, know, it's, I know in machines it's by hand too, because my mum had brain surgery, right? Okay. And the doctor was doing surgery on her brain from five meters away okay. because he was on a machine. Mm -hmm. And there was a machine on her head doing mm -hmm. everything because okay. the human hand is far too big for it to be able to run wires through arteries of the brain and, and you know, tie them up and stuff like that, not yeah. to cause any bleeding. Sure. Is that in dentistry as well? Do you have that? Yeah. Um, 
well, for me personally, no, I don't use uh, robots, mm -hmm. but I do use um, some new technology. So, for example, the way this whole uh, futuristic approach has been introduced is now we use 3D printing. Uh, we do use scanners instead of, you know, the impressions they used to take. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. now we use scanners instead. Mm -hmm. uh, we have um, electrical injections. Uh, instead of the traditional ones. Electrical injection? Yeah. How? So basically it's this new machine that gets your tooth anesthetized without blocking the whole nerve. Because you know, if you've taken an injection before, then you feel like your whole face is numb and your tongue and stuff. Of course. Now there's this just like baby robot that you just put at the tooth that you want to get anesthetized and it kind of infuses the anesthesia into it. Uh, Without an injection? There's, I mean, there's a tiny tip, tiny needle, but it's not sure. like the one we used to see before. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. So, Interesting. Have you got that machine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've, you got, use it. we've got all of that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and is it less painful, that injection? Much less much painful. Less. But to be honest with you, even injections at dentists aren't painful because you put the cream before. Well, you've you had a good dentist then that's yeah. the case yeah, yeah. And <laughs> the thing about my dentist is he goes very slow but it, it's it's the longest injection you've ever had in your yeah. life yeah. it's like 10 minutes yeah. but he says if I go fast it will hurt not 10 minutes but it, it yeah, could go for like you know uh, I'm 2 minutes but but yeah. that's for your sake because if it we go like fast yeah that does if, if, you, if he goes fast it might cause a lot of pressure which sure. would cause more pain than the actual needle if you go fast because the liquid is cold mm -hmm. it hurts that's yeah. the pain yeah. right um, so yeah, you go slow. We go as slow as we can, you know, try to keep it very smooth because we'd rather take time than to actually hurt the patient. Exactly. So, yeah, and okay. also, even if you go really slow at the beginning, by the time you're like halfway through, the tooth is already numb in mm -hmm. a way, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So then you go and, faster. And the surrounding tissue is numb as well. Yeah. So the patient would be more relaxed. He won't feel yeah. the needle as much as when it first got in. Sure. Yeah. Got yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, let's start from the beginning. Where are you from? Well, uh, originally parents are from Palestine. Okay, beautiful. Uh, yeah, um, and um, I was born and raised in Dubai. Um, wow. Lived in London for uh, some time and then um, got some trips to Germany back and forth while I was there. Got another degree from Germany and then came back home, Dubai. So you got your degree in Germany and you came back here. Your brother's a dentist. Yes. Um, and both work, work from the same clinic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he started the clinic. I see. 26 nice. years ago, and then nice. I joined 10 years ago. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. How old is he? How is he older than you? Like, how much older than What's the he age gap? He is... <laughs> it's going to be funny. Uh, he's 19 years older. Wow. I'm same sorry. parents. I'm sorry. Same parents. Wow. Uh, the only parents. Wow. Uh, yeah. He's not going to be very happy about that. So. Okay. <laughs> and it's just you two? Uh, no, we're five brothers. Five brothers, yeah. okay. And are you the youngest? I'm the youngest. And he's the oldest? No, there's oh, one older. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. 19 years. 19 years. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> How does that feel to be the youngest of 19? Uh, there are some pros and cons. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I would say it's a bit uh, challenging because all okay. of my brothers came, you know, back to back. Yeah. They're all from the same age yeah. group. Yeah. And then there was a huge gap and then yeah. I came along. Uh, it's it's uh, kind of weird because you grow up with a bunch of people with an older mindset mm -hmm. and you're just constantly trying to cope with that and mm -hmm. catch up with, the, with everything yeah. you're doing while your brain just doesn't comprehend that, okay, look, chill, there's 20 years difference. Yeah. You're not supposed to be the same. Yeah. You're not supposed yeah. to yeah. do all the things they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of, uh, uh, I don't know, like an uh, early, early maturity that you sure. go through. Uh, so you put a lot of pressure on yourself. Yeah. 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 Look, I'm sure you've done interviews before. People talk about, you know, dentistry innovations and challenges in dentistry. What I want to know. Yeah. A good looking dentist like you, what's dating like in Dubai? <laughs> uh, <laughs> dating like in Dubai? Not much going on, man. Not, not much, much going not on. Not much, no, no. Damn. Yeah, no. If there's I not mean, much going on for you, there's no uh, hope for us. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've, I mean, uh, all I can think of is that my, my time is... 90% work. Okay. Yeah. And 10% and gym. 10% no, yeah, gym and like work after work and okay. stuff. Because I do a lot of things, not just dentistry. So yeah, uh, yeah no, not much of that. Because no I, I, I don't think it would be fair to get someone into a relationship and then like not give them my full attention. I don't think I'm at that place in life. What a catch. Well, what a catch you are. Thank you, you thank are. you, man. Thank you. What a catch <laughs> you are. Because, you know, 
guys would say, guys, you know, there's guys that know this, that they, they, they can't commit to a girl because they're so busy, but they will still act like they're going to commit just to be able to have someone get around. laid. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's, uh, look, I believe it's not something that you plan. Uh, mm-hmm. It's something that just happens. Of course. Comes there. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I mean, Dubai is a very uh, seductive place. Yes. If you want to call it. Yes. Uh, Promiscuous. Yeah, but uh, for me, I'm just maybe a bit too picky. You know, it's just. just oh, you're picky. Yeah, I mean, probably that's one of the reasons. Yeah, yeah. You have high standards. It's not about high standards, but the thing is, with all respect to all the ladies out there, mm. I, I feel that. Uh, I mean, not just in Dubai. I, I don't know. That's the vibe I get probably from social media. So there's a lot of girls, mm-hmm. but very few women. Mm. You know. Facts. It's, yeah. Fair. So. Uh, you, you gotta find yourself a woman. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very easy not to grow up in Dubai. I mean, you can't blame them. Yeah, it's uh, they yeah. call it the the Disneyland for adults. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, it literally is the Disneyland of adults. It's beautiful though. Yeah, 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 it's gorgeous. I had a bit of a situation ship recently, and then when we when we went our separate ways, she said to me, "I'm not even mad at you because I'd be doing the same thing if I was you." That's what yeah, she said to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've, we've seen all kinds of scenarios, yeah. you know, <laughs> such stuff. Yeah. Okay, so how, you're single? Yeah. Okay, wow. How old are you? I'm 30. 30? Yeah. Awesome. How old are you? 34. Okay. Respect your elders. Yeah, yeah. sorry. <laughs> sorry for that. <laughs> sorry, master. <laughs> you know, I was having a chat with somebody the other day, mm-hmm. and they were t- I, was t- I was asking them about veneers. Yeah. Veneers. And he said to me, look, he's a dentist. Yeah. He's a friend of mine. Okay. He said to me, look, your teeth are precious. Facts. Try to be, try to not do veneers and work with what you have. Because I said, listen, it's only 0.5 mil that they're taking off. He goes, I know that. It's not, not in much. All, not, not in all cases. Not in all cases. No. And he goes, I know that. But still, work with what you have. Get something else, whatever. But just try to keep your... So are you of the same belief of st- try to stay away from veneers? It's not about stay away from veneers. It's about being conservative. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a conservative dentist, and I think every dentist should be a conservative dentist. Mm-hmm. As your good friend said, mm-hmm. teeth are very precious because you've got this number to, to for the rest of your life. You, they're not going to grow again. So the the approach I always go for is we always start with the minimal treatment. So you've got good teeth, you want them a little brighter, go for whitening, whether it's at home, or in the clinic. Uh, you've got issues with the, the alignment of the teeth, they're crooked or something, you can just use aligners or braces. Mm-hmm. You're still maintaining the natural tooth. In very selective cases, all right, there are cases, if those two were not enough, we can go for veneers, but without touching the tooth, without drilling the tooth. So it's basically like having eye contacts on. I see. You know? And they so, stick on. Yes, all right. Now, but that for, for you to get that, it's like probably 10% of the population can actually get that. Sure. Okay? Because there's certain criteria, you know, the, the teeth need, need to be small, pushed back a bit, mm-hmm. a bit of spaces preferably. So that's the, the third option. Mm-hmm. Next comes if, you know, your teeth aren't really in place, you know, there's one tooth that's a bit out, the other one is a bit longer than the other, we can go for minimal, uh, minimal prepared teeth. So you just slightly drill the teeth mm-hmm. from just the front surface a tiny bit and then you place the veneers and then the last solution would be the full drilling the crowns basically where sure. they drill the whole tooth and cover like the tooth with a sure uh, with a crown um, so that's how we go sure. for me i always talk like, like explain this to the patient i tell them please let's try to get things done the conservative way got ya. yeah when you go on a date do you judge the girl by her teeth <laughs> Everyone judges people by their teeth, man. But do they? I, yeah, the only thing is I do it faster. You're like, where's my assistant? Yeah. Uh, C2? C2 is yeah. uh, a little bit crooked. Uh, f- <laughs> is, that, is that the terminology? I don't even Almost. know. Almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, C1, C uh, whatever. Look, you can't judge people by their teeth, mm-hmm. but you can tell a few things. What can you tell about my teeth? Your teeth, uh-huh. well, diagnostically, you've got an open bite. I do, of course. Clearly, I do. Yeah, they're yeah, yeah, yeah. a bit yeah. crowded. Whenever I take a bite into a hamburger, the yeah, tomato always comes yeah, it out. Comes out. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, aesthetically. But, but, no, aesthetically, they're, they're not bad. They're not bad? No. This is an implant. Yeah. It's, it's, a, can, dub, it's a double implant. Yeah, I saw they're attached together. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, I tell you what, uh, I'm not a fan of perfect teeth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. don't like perfect teeth. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone is chasing that perfect set of teeth. Yeah, doesn't exist. Old fashioned. Yeah. No, no, it yeah. exists. No, in, with veneers. It it doesn't exist in real world. In the real world. No, that's right. why I don't like it. Yeah, yeah, that's why. If I always tell my patients, my goal after the treatment, whether it's veneers or not, is for people to tell you, you've got nice teeth. Sure. But not. You've got nice teeth. Where did you get them done? Oh, you know. Well if, if they told you where did you get them done, means yeah. they look fake. Yeah, they look fake. Yeah. Exactly. And then don't tell them it was me. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, it's like you know, like all the girls kind of look the same now. Like they all have the same nose. I'm like, that's that's Doctor whatever his name's nose. I know that nose. Oh, you're trying to get us in trouble. <laughs> no, they don't. We, we dance on the line in this podcast. This is. Did you think you were coming on a Forbes interview? Right. I kind because, of. Yeah. No, this I, is I wish wild. you told me, man. I would have came I'm, in my like sweatpants. And my stuff. <laughs> my goal is to get cancelled as quickly as possible. I kind of figure it's. And I want to know figure. how quickly I can get cancelled. My TikTok already got taken down. No way. A lot, lot, lot of Andrew Tate talk. I had Andrew Tate's uh, friends on there, and Jewel and stuff like that, and they said, um, yeah, didn't like it. Sorry for that. Happens. The Matrix is after me. Oh yeah. All I want to say is I would uh, never kill myself. Oh well. Uh, uh, that, well, uh, I'm happy for you now. <laughs> I feel good. <laughs> you, you're a celebrity dentist. Okay. Uh, well, that's a title that they've given. Yeah. That they've given. I know. Yeah. You're on stage yesterday, and you're like, I can't really talk about my clients, yeah. whatever. Um, without telling me who, without like obviously breaching client confidentiality. Uh, who was the most difficult celebrity? You can tell me, no one's watching. <laughs> yeah, right, just all three cameras. <laughs> uh, most difficult celebrity? Look, I, can't, I won't mention names, but I'll tell you something. The bigger the celebrity, the easier it is to deal with him. Wow. Wow, that's actually so true. Yeah. Because so it's the you know the newcomers mm. into the scene are the ones that are like yeah, I'm a star don't touch me. <laughs> oh my god, I hate that. <laughs> that, that's that's the case. But I, honestly, uh, I don't know how to say this, but like with all humbleness, um, we don't face much of those. Yeah, okay. like the ones we get are like actual you know nice people. nice people. Yeah, and that's because we don't reach out. We never reach. They out. come to you. They come. So. Yeah. We, we maintain this very, you know, friendly, yet professional um, mm-hmm. relationship. You know I floss, right? Yeah. And then my dad bought me this thing, the water... What do they call it? The water... Water pick. The water, water pick, flosser, right? Yes. <laughs> and then you kind of put it in the side of your tooth and it goes... With water. Yeah. Right? Um, it was a bit sharp for me. Maybe I got gingivitis. I don't know. Maybe have a look. At, we'll, we'll see if I got gingivitis. Or maybe you were using the wrong brand. Hmm. Watch me being all commercial. Mm. <laughs> okay, tell me more. No, I, I I usually always prescribe water pick for water sure. flossers. Like they are done based on, you know, science. The sure. pressure, the way they the water is, you know, pushed between the teeth, the way it flosses out everything. So that's why Have I you always... tried the ones that are like really sharp and it goes Poof. I've seen those. Yeah, you have you ever felt it? Yeah. It hurts, right? It hurts. This one's not like that. No. That's not the case. This is are you an amba- you're an ambassador for this company? Uh, yeah, I recently right? signed uh, signed an, uh, an endorsement deal with them. Okay. Yeah, and I'm honestly very proud to uh, to represent the company. See, the thing is, I've been like in the dental industry for almost ten years, a bit or more, um, and um, I've uh, been on social media for almost eight years now, mm-hmm. and I've had so many offers mm-hmm. to you know do ads, uh, promote products, uh, endorsement deals. And I never signed any. Mm. If you go on my Instagram, you will not find one single ad. Sure. Never. Not in the past eight years. Uh, and then I had a lot of people asking me, like, why don't you do ads? Why don't you promote stuff? And for me, um, credibility is a big deal, mm. especially as a healthcare professional, because people trust you with their lives. You know, mm, it's their health. So I can't go out there promoting just random things for the for the money. Sure. So I always said that they. I sign uh, with a company to promote their products. It has to be something that I've been prescribing my entire life. Mm-hmm. And that's the case. Um, I've been prescribing water pick for the past 10 years. And then one day uh, I was in the office and then one of the representatives walked in and uh, was like, hey doctor, you know, this is an amazing product. You should uh, uh, you should uh, use it and prescribe it and stuff. I looked at him like, 
please. I've yeah. been prescribing this way before you got into the company. Yeah. Uh, and it's one of my favorite brands. And I was like, oh, that's amazing. And then, you know, the higher management got in contact with me. And they're like, look, I mean, if you really trust the brand, why don't we work together? Yeah. Uh, and then they thought, uh, why not sign an endorsement deal? And mm -hmm. it happened. I'm actually um, their first official ambassador Incredible. for the company. And, and it's a Dubai brand? No, no. It's, it's massive. It's, it's, a, it's an international company. Okay. It's, it's the biggest and fastest growing uh, water flosser in the world okay. and the first water flosser ever made. The company goes back to 1960s. Wow. Yeah. Is a water floss better than a normal floss? Uh, yes, for me. A lot of people might say no. Uh, there's certain cases where we do need the, you know, the, mm -hmm. uh, the traditional physical floss. Uh, but the water floss uh, for me is better because uh, it's easier to control. Mm -hmm less chances to injure your gum because the thing with flossing is a lot of people don't have proper control over it mm -hmm. so they end up like you know pushing it mm -hmm. a little extra into the gum which hurts the gum of course so uh controlling the the um the water flosser is much easier and then i'll tell you how you'll figure out if it's more effective or not i want you to brush your teeth uh floss yeah. with the regular floss and then after that use the water flosser Okay, and see if and more... And then see what's gonna still come out. Wow. You'll notice that even after brushing and flossing, you, there's, there are still things stuck in there. Wow. Yeah. Okay, good idea. Yeah, check yeah, it yeah, out. Yeah, Let yeah. me know. I, I, I will check it out. <laughs> Where do I buy this from? Can I buy it from your clinic? I'll send you the link. It's all over the place. Okay. Yeah, you okay, find sure. it in pharmacies and... Okay. Yeah. I, uh, I grind my teeth, mm. right? Being, being, um, being born to, uh, you know, a Middle Eastern background with parents that don't know how to raise kids, you know. I've got a bit of trauma, okay? <laughs> so I grind my teeth at night. Yeah. Why do you grind your teeth? Oh my God, we did everything for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I grind my teeth because of the trauma I've been given. But yeah. anyways, yeah. Uh, that's, that's, uh, that's, you're a neuropsychologist. The psychologist is next podcast. Yeah. Um, and you know you've got your mouth guard that you grind your teeth, right? Over time, that starts turning cloudy and it's like getting a color. Yeah. How do you maintain to clean that? Because I know a lot of my friends struggle with this. Um, uh, look, I, I try to keep it very simple. I don't want to get into like specific products to use for that. Baking you know, soda. Just, uh, no, I mean, the, the color you can't really control over time. So you just, I, I recommend you change it at least like once a year or so. Is the color dangerous? Uh, no. Well, as dangerous. long as no, no, as long as you clean it well, you know, just uh, uh, some mouthwash. Make sure you brush it properly. Uh, Every day. Well, whenever you feel it, sure. it needs to be brushed. Sure. You can tell for sure. Sure. And then, uh, but you know, with some uh, some water, uh, sorry, mouth uh, mouth uh, mouthwash, like Listerine, like yeah. Uh, what about those denture pills? I, I'm, I'm not so sure, to be honest, because they're different brands and some of them might be a little too aggressive. Mm. You know, it might wear it down. Mm -hmm. So I prefer uh, an alcohol-free uh, mouthwash okay. and uh, some water and that's it. Okay. But definitely don't leave it in, in the cup overnight or something. Or like, I mean, during the day. You know what I do? I, have, I, I leave it in a cup of water which is fresh water, like every day when I wash it yeah. in hot water or whatever, yeah. and then I leave it, so it's always in water, it's always wet. I don't recommend that because it's, it's um, silicon or you know, okay. the material might you know, be okay. affected by that. So. I see, okay. Yeah. Well, I'll just come to you for another one. Well, please, anytime. Why, <laughs> Why don't you try Botox injections? What do you mean? Like you can get uh, two injections in these two muscles okay. here, and then those uh, muscles will be relaxed that you cannot clench at night. What if I want to clench during the day? Why would you? Chew food? No, you can chew. You have full function, but you cannot overstress. Ah, really? See? Do you do this? No. 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 So two injections here and here, yeah. and then you don't need to, you don't clench anymore. I mean, in most cases, 90% yeah. of cases, they yeah. eventually stop. Okay. Because clenching is, is a habit. Mm. When you get those injections, uh, gradually you're not going to be able to clench much and then your brain will forget this habit so by the time the effect of the Botox is gone you won't be clenching much oh, anymore I didn't know it was a habit yeah. I thought it was like when like you're having a nightmare and it's a stress it. habit <clears throat> it's so, a stress habit yeah, so some people express their stress in different ways that's sure. one of them like um, you know some people for example they pick on their they bite their nails, nails or they, yeah. Yeah. would you like so, water? no I'm good thank you man um, okay question uh, what do you think of Listerine? Yeah, man, we can't say names. <laughs> okay, what do you think of mouthwash? One of them starts with L. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, <laughs> it's good as long as you make sure it doesn't have alcohol because that will get you, it will get your mouth dehydrated mm-hmm. and it might cause more cavities. Um, and um, it doesn't have uh, chlorhexidine. Chlorhexidine is, is, um, is very important, but not all the time. Okay. We, if you're going to use a mouthwash with chlorhexidine, just make sure it's prescribed by a dentist. Sure. And for a short period of time. Okay. Because if you overuse it, your teeth will become brown. I see. Stained, like permanently. Wow, yeah. permanently. Yeah. Then you need veneers. Then you need veneers. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, my, my friend of mine, he, so anyways, I was going to get veneers. I'm going back to the story selfishly. Yeah. Um, and he said to me, why don't you get bleach? And he goes, smile. And you can't really see my bottom teeth when I smile. Yeah. And he said, why don't you do five to five or six to six? Uh, veneers. No, not veneers, bleach. Bleach. Yeah, he's like, like whiten your teeth six to six or five to yeah. five or something like yeah. that. I can do that, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you think I should do that? Yeah, let's get it done today. I want to get it. You can do it that quick? Yeah. Does it take time? No. Do you, do you Half have an hour. Well, I mean, why not? We'll, yeah. Uh, let's just get back. We'll get it done. Book me in. Yeah. What are some of the challenges being a dentist? Challenges being a dentist, uh, well, apart from the obvious, the <laughs> the back pain and the awkward positions that you're yeah. constantly in. Yeah. Um, I would say um, just kind of communicating with every patient with his language. Hmm. Not the actual language, but like you know, the, with their with their uh, with their style or with their uh, mentality. Sure. Yeah, uh, because for me, a lot of a lot of dentists and a lot of people miss out on that, and I don't think it's just in dentistry. I believe in every industry. Of course. Uh, dealing with your clients, and I don't like to call them clients; they're called patients in the okay. clinic. Um, you need to get into their comfort zone. You need to make sure that. Everything you say is is convenient to them, and this happens in many different styles. Because what makes you comfortable doesn't make me comfortable. I see. You know, so for me, the first appointment is just about building the bond with the patient. Uh-huh. You know, uh, the friendship, the professional friendship. Yeah. Uh, once you're in that comfort zone with the patient, everything after that is super easy. Okay. So there's just uh, a lot of you know mind games that you need to. Yeah, you know, keep keep uh, keep an eye on. Make sure okay. that you are uh, giving them what they need. Sure. Psychologically before. Physically. Sure. Yeah. Sure. What's your patient care philosophy? Patient care philosophy. Every patient is a VIP. Hmm. And uh, I I I know every business would say that, and a lot of companies would say that. But that, as you mentioned, that we do work with. A lot of celebrities and, and uh, VIPs and politicians, etc. Yeah. So we do have certain protocols yeah. that we need to yeah. follow those patients. And I use the same protocol with my regular patients. Hmm. So. You know, even though you work with celebrities, you're also like a dentist celebrity. <laughs> Am I? Yeah. yeah. Well, okay, I'll take that. <laughs> you were on the panel yesterday, you invited to talk and stuff like that. Yeah, we, 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 he was in my panel yesterday. Oh, I was watching, yeah. I was How fanboying. Was I was fanboying. How was that? Yeah, it was really good. It was, good. It was really Thank good. <laughs> I really laughed when um, uh, Adam, uh, the moderator, goes, Everyone smile, everyone smile. Yeah, you call me, you, you call, call me, you call me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, business is business, you know. <laughs> business is business, gotta make money. <laughs> exactly. That was really funny. Yeah, so, no, as just as I was saying, every, every patient is a priority, and I always tell our staff members nothing in the world Mm -hmm. is more important than the patient that's on the chair right now Mm. because sometimes there's a lot of pressure going on there's one in the waiting area there's your family calling you at home you know something happened here and there when you're on that chair that's it that's my priority after the patient leaves then I can see the, the one after then I can look at my phone, then I can see everything else. Do all the other things. Yeah. God, yeah. yeah. That's, that's a really interesting philosophy. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the only way to go. <sighs> this is your main priority right now. And it must be really good mentally as well, just to detach from everything and just go, just focus on one thing. Yeah. And that, but honestly, uh, a lot of dentists would agree to this. It's uh, mentally exhausting throughout the day. Sure. Because imagine working in a workspace that is like, in centimeters or millimeters yes. actually yeah. all day long yeah. focused on that area and then um, you just constantly need to keep smiling and laughing and 
kind of going with the flow, whatever it was. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes when patients come in pain, I don't know if you've experienced that, but when you're talking to a, not, not as a patient, but when okay. you're talking to a person that is in pain, oh. it actually requires a lot of effort to like kind of meet them halfway, you yeah. know, just make sure that they understand what you're saying, trying yeah. to calm them. There's a lot of things you're trying to achieve at the same time. Mm-hmm. So when you have like nine to 12 hours of that, I do 12 hours sometimes. When you wow. do nine to 12 hours of that, and then you go back home, you're just like, don't talk to me. <laughs> you know, I don't, want to talk to I don't want to talk to anyone. It's just me yeah, myself yeah. now. This is why all. you kind of a girlfriend then. I see. Maybe one of the She's reasons. Like, you need to listen to me. I need to talk. Maybe one of I the reasons. I can't listen to anyone right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, it, 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 it consumes you. Yeah, uh, of yeah. course. But I mean, Please. it's nice at the end of the day. It's a, it's a good job. Do you regret the career path or you love the no, career no, path? No, no, no. I don't. No, you no. love it. I, it's, it's beautiful. Uh, I don't think out of... Um, I think I would have done things better, but um, I think I had a great opportunity. I had um, um, a big vision for it, mm-hmm. and it's it's going great. Yeah, things it are is. going according to plan. Yeah, good, good. Yeah. It is. I mean, you guys are probably the most well, the most well-known dentists in the area. Uh, I think. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, yeah, I mean, uh, I, even my cousin who's a dentist in Vancouver knows about you guys. Oh, really? Yeah, I messaged awesome. him. I was like, I'm doing a podcast with these guys tomorrow. Uh, nice. Well, and he's like, oh, yeah, I know. What's so, up, cousin? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> his name is Kami. His dad's a dentist oh, and nice. he's a dentist. He's very good uh, by the way, a lot of family, a lot of dental families yeah. like that, you know, yeah. it kind of carries on. Yeah, is, yeah, what's your dad do? Is he a dentist? No, no, no. No, nah, okay. Not, so no. Your, your brother started it. My brother started it, yeah, yeah. Okay. Tell me like a memorable moment that's always stayed in your memory being a dentist. There's a lot of uh, a lot of memories. You want the emotional ones? Give me the emotional ones. The emotional ones. I had a patient that finished her treatment, got up, looked at the mirror, and she's like, "This is the first day of my life." Oh my god! Yeah, because her teeth were bad. Wow. Her teeth were very bad, and I um, and I get a lot a lot of those because not just me as dentists, you will receive a lot of cases that are actually horrible mm-hmm. and a lot of people like maybe that's not a very common thing to be seen but a lot of people actually uh, have a crisis like the, 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 the downside of their entire life is their teeth mm-hmm. a lot of people they cannot work they cannot smile they cannot speak properly um, so once they suddenly have like a perfect set of teeth it's like a different person wow yeah so uh, that's, that's that's incredible that's, yeah that's one of those that's really rewarding cases. Um, and that stayed with you. Her comment stayed with you. Yes, it's. Not, I mean, imagine someone telling you, like, I'm, "I'm reborn." You know, I know. it's. Uh, it's may, I know. It might not sound very big to a lot of people. It's, it's like you gave birth. Something. Yeah. Well, <laughs> without the pain. Yeah. <laughs> without the pain. Yeah. <laughs> she held the pain. She had the pain. <laughs> she had it. Um, yeah, it's that's one of those little things, and I've seen like a lot of those dramatic scenarios in the clinic. I don't know if we're supposed to be talking about this, but like, um, I've. I've seen some bad family issues because of teeth as well. Violence? Not violence, but I uh, I had a husband drop his wife off and he's like, if if those are not fixed, I don't want her back. Holy shit. What the fuck? And she stays with him? Unfortunately, we're not going to get into cultural issues, but some of them are obliged. So... Uh, Meanwhile, I buy this girl flowers, I do dates, <laughs> and, it's not and enough. she leaves me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not enough. Uh, no, but yeah, I, I, I think that case was for me like a mission. Like it was, it, I took it personally. Yeah, of I course. was like, this has to get fixed yeah. and we need to do something. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, uh, she got a beautiful result. Um, okay. I was happy for her, not for him. So, yeah, 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 of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Um, okay, so, it, it, like, do you ever mess up? The dentist ever mess up going, shit, I maybe drilled too much into that or this or that? Or no, it's, it's all the same service everyone gets. No, it's not all the same service. It's not all the same service? No. 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 That's why, it's, I mean, how can I prove it? You, and not just me, but no clinic will stand still uh, over 26 years if they mm-hmm. mess up. I see. You know? I see. So experience is a factor. It's, it's a major factor. Yeah. So um, 
Um, to a lot of people who crit- I mean, criticize certain dentists, and by the way, not, not just us. I, mm-hmm. I sometimes have patients that come up to me and they go like, hey, I went to this dentist and then he did this and that and it was horrible and I'm sure he messed it up and he did a mistake. And I know the dentist is talking about, we're mm-hmm. not friends, but the man has a reputation. He's, mm-hmm. he's been there for so many years. Mm-hmm. He has beautiful cases. I've seen some of his patients that came to me with excellent teeth. Mm-hmm. So. To me, there's something you know doubtful over there. Sure. There's something that went wrong. Sure. Um, uh, on the other hand, there are others where you just constantly receive like damages from them. So you're yeah. like, ah, okay, expected. So, um, and they don't usually last for long. Okay. Because uh, thankfully, living in a beautiful city like Dubai, there's excellent, you know, uh, supervision over everything happening. Of course. And they always make sure that everyone is, you know, taken yeah. care of. So if you screw up once or twice, eventually, like. The yeah. DHA would reach out or something. You're not going to be there for long. Yeah, I see. So, I see. Yeah. I see. So the ones that are still around, they're doing. They're doing something right. Yes. Because you know, I'll tell you my story. Okay. okay. I my my dentist in Australia. Mm-hmm. Um, he was a bit of a party animal, and I would have to see him. Let's say Sunday morning at 9 a.m. And I would go on Instagram. I'd have him on Instagram, and he'd be out partying until four in the morning and drinking and everything. Mm-hmm. In the morning, I'd come and see him and say, Hey. You, you doing okay? Yeah, you, you, you hungover? Like, come on! Like, I can come tomorrow. I can come tomorrow if you're not feeling 100%. So I thought maybe they just all do the same service. But he's in prison now. That's a long story. Oh, wow. um, yeah. So no, nothing to do with dentistry. Mm. Uh, but I was always wondering: do they all give the same service, or is it based on oh, he didn't get enough sleep last night? You know what I mean? Something like that. Yeah. No. I mean. Uh just make sure your dentist is sleeping well at night, that's, that's all. And don't go on Sundays yeah, then, yeah. <laughs> go midweek. Go midweek, he booked me for Sunday for some reason. But the good thing about this doctor here is he, he sleeps well, he's 90% of his time in his dentistry, he doesn't have a woman to keep him up all night or nothing. He is fresh, fresh on his game every time. Well, every we day. try, we try. Every day. If you like this video, consider subscribing. We do weekly podcasts with experts in every industry to help you find direction and guide you on your way. Now let's get back into it. How does the future of dentistry look like? Do you think the dentistry job will be something that will be taken away from robots, AI or something? Not taken away, but reduced. So, mm. and it's, it's almost happening. I, I think dentistry today has changed like in a crazy way compared to a couple of years ago. Mm. And when you say in the past in dentistry, it's not 10 years ago. In the past is last year. Wow. If you're not, if you're not keeping up, yeah. there's so much going on. There's yeah. a lot of technologies. So um, I think it's, it's going somewhere great. Uh, I think our job is going to be much easier. Yeah. Uh, a lot of things are not replacing us, but they're facilitating the process for sure. us. So, but at the end of the day, you will always need that human factor. Sure, yeah. sure, got yeah. Okay. Dentistry in Dubai is such a competitive market, especially in the space that you're in, because there's, it's celebrity city Dubai, yeah. right? It's so easy to do a podcast with a celebrity. Everyone's a somebody. Yeah. Do your competitors drop their ethics and talk shit about you and to clients and like, how does that work? The dynamic is the bitchiness. What's going on with that? Tell me inside. Um, look, uh, I don't know what happens in other clinics. I don't know what do they say. Sometimes every now and then you'd hear, you know, a bit of chats here and there. But let me talk about myself. Let me talk about us as, as Liberty Dental Clinic. It is in our guidelines manual that every employee has to sign on. That you are never allowed to speak badly or criticize a dentist. Wow. Or you're the previous dentist. Sure. Ever. It says so much about you, mm. you know? And they represent us as a brand. Mm. Everyone in the clinic represents the entire mm. clinic. So you will never see me or anyone in the mm. clinic go like, you know, oh my God, what's wrong with your tooth? It's mm. probably your previous dentist did this or did that. It's wrong. Mm. Ethically, it's wrong. We're taught that in, in mm. university, but mutual respect among us as healthcare professionals is, is a major mm. thing that we need to mm. keep in mind. And if, if I speak badly about the previous dentist, I'm sure the patient is not gonna give you that full respect that mm. you might have. Okay, sometimes you do see like, horrible things Mm -hmm. been done but like my approach is always look it's not my way of doing it Mm -hmm. uh i believe in a better way Mm -hmm. if if you have your trust in me then i think we should go for it this Mm way i've done this many cases or i can show you some examples that came in with the issue that you have and we Mm -hmm. fixed it 
using my method. Mm. And I think that's the way to maintain the respect in, in our industry. It's, it's just very wrong. Mm, look, you're, you're a gentleman, your moral compass is strong, but come on, this is me, nobody's watching. Let's give me a dentist's name, fuck that guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's go after him. <laughs> no, trust me, you'll never get it out of me. <laughs> you'll never get it out of me. No, but you know why? Yeah. Because a lot of uh, the, the industry is, is a science and an art. Yeah, it is. There are so many uh, different ways to get things done. Mm. Okay. And unfortunately, some dentists think that if it's not done their way, then it's the wrong way. Yeah. That's not the case. Yeah. No, there's, I, I, there are some ways that I don't choose. Yeah. But doesn't mean I think they're wrong. They yeah. work, but it's not my favorite case. Yeah. So everyone has his theory. Everyone has his method of doing things. So I cannot go around criticizing people for believing in this or that. And let me tell you something. A lot of people go back to, you know, uh, evidence-based research and, you know, clinical trials and all that. I can find you a research proving whatever point you want, anyway really? or another. And the thing, a lot of people yeah. are not, uh, well, yeah. I, can, I don't want to say educated enough. A lot of people don't know how to differentiate between like a legit proper research yeah. and just like one that you can find somewhere. Yeah, on Twitter. So, uh, no, no, like actual yeah. scientific research. There okay. are some that are not strong enough. Wow. Yeah. So some people bring out this paper, like the do case you, study of ten people. Yeah, like do you know them. exactly? Do you know what's what's been the case in yeah, that research? Yeah. So, look, there's so many things going on, so yeah. many different ways, so many different methods. So, just do your thing, respect everyone else, and that's it. And that's it. Yeah. That's so interesting. <laughs> Art and science at the same time, because I I can pull up a I can pull up an article right now that says coffee is good for you. I can pull up another article that says coffee will give you cancer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Any, anything Especially you on Google, anything yeah. will give you cancer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> on Google. Yeah. So uh, yeah, there are so many different ways to look at things. What co- do you smoke? No. Shisha? No. Nothing. What's the worst thing for gum decay? Worst thing for gum decay? Uh, gum decay, I mean, you mean gum infection. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Gum, well, gum infection. Uh, smoking, smoking is one of those factors. Uh, anything that um, affects the tooth on a long term will eventually affect the, the gum. So, for sure. example, if you don't brush well, mm-hmm. plaque will accumulate in your mouth and, mm-hmm. you know, all the calculus and all that. That will, you know, apply some pressure on the on the on the gum, accumulate a lot of bacteria on the margins of the gum. Therefore, it will lead to infections and sure. all that. So, apart from brushing twice or three times daily, it's very important to visit the dentist every six months because all the calculus accumulating on the teeth cannot be removed with your toothbrush. Wow! So you need to remove it professionally at the at the dental Professional office. Professional clean. Yeah, at the dental office. So that's how uh, you prevent gum issues. I need to start doing that. Yeah, you should. I should. I know a good place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, We'll we'll go there later. later. Yeah. (laughs) What advice do you have for somebody watching this podcast and he wants to be a dentist? Don't. (laughs) Uh, Advice I have for someone who wants to be a dentist? Yes. Um, (laughs) Don't be a dentist. (laughs) No, man. (laughs) Uh, Look, not. um, Just make sure that's what you want to do. and keep in mind it's a very competitive i'm going to speak business first Mm -hmm. it's a very competitive market oversaturated um and uh, it's not an easy job so if you know that then the only reason you would want to get into it is if you are actually passionate about it or you like it um so just make sure that's the that's the case Mm -hmm. um once that is sorted out uh once you become a dentist i believe ethics is major every patient is is or should be considered as a family member Mm -hmm. to make sure that you're providing the best treatment Mm -hmm. and um, details Mm. details like it's it's a very very fine area that you're working with Mm -hmm. so you need to perfect that Mm -hmm. you know cubic millimeter that Mm -hmm. you're working with Mm -hmm. of course yeah do you get any dentists that you come and you just go, wow, this tooth is disgusting? Do I get anyone? Do you, like, uh, like I would imagine if yeah. I was a dentist yeah. and let's say I have somebody that comes and sees me and he has like homeless people teeth, mm. right? He has mm. horrible teeth. Oh, yeah, I get Do you ever go, oh, this is disgusting? No. Oh, no, so you're no, just no, used no. to it. No. No. Like no, by, nothing disgusting. By the, time, by the time you're done with uh, university, yeah. you're done with it. You're over that. Nothing disgusts yeah. you. Because... I don't know, but at least in our region, the worst you're going to see in terms of 
the disgusting things yeah. you'll be seeing in the in college in college got you. yeah so because that, that's funny every time a patient walks in they go like oh my god i'm so embarrassed you're gonna see the worst teeth ever i'm like okay just put your head back <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. i have like 10 of those every day yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so don't worry yeah. guys your teeth are never the worst there's yeah. always someone worse than that, worse than that. <laughs> interesting yeah what disgusts you then Ah, my friends would actually be laughing about this. I am, um, it's it's a very weird combination that I have. Mm. I am a borderline germophobe. Whoa, yeah. how's the dentist? Uh, yeah, okay. it's weird. Okay. Uh, but I mean, uh, in my life, like if I'm at a restaurant, like I always have a sanitizer. Like you always see me cleaning the wow. table around me, uh, sanitizing my hands yeah. and all that. Yeah. But. You know, and at work, mm -hmm. I'm in my gloves. Mm -hmm. I know I'm well protected. I'm mm -hmm. well equipped for that. So I'm okay. Plus, I'm used to it. Sure. But like with my skin, with yeah. my direct body contact, yeah. I'm, I'm very yeah, yeah, okay. picky. <laughs> You're on a date with Jennifer Lopez. J-Lo. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Right. If she wants to kiss you, she comes a little bit close to talk to you and her breath smells. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What would you do? I would still kiss her. What would you do? <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, I, I never thought I would be doing such interviews, so yeah, Raiden, you, Sorry you, about that. you did that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I don't kiss and tell, man. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Perfect response. <laughs> uh, Me yeah, too. Me yeah, too. I do yeah. the same thing. I do the same thing. How does somebody control bad breath? <clears throat> Where uh, does bad breath come from? Good question. First, we need to find this the, the, the reason behind the cause. Bad breath isn't necessarily your, from your mouth. Mm -hmm. It could be from your stomach. It could be from your tonsils, mm -hmm. if they're infected. It could be from your gums, if you have infected gums. It could be from teeth and cavities in your teeth. Um, and it could be from uh, ulcers or any infections that you have in the oral cavity in general. Mm -hmm and extrinsic factors such as uh, food. garlic, food, mm. onions. What about that. your tongue? Uh, yeah, it I could mean, be from your it tongue? It could be from, any, as I said, any, any, <clears throat> any, sure. anything in your, in, your in your mouth, any infection or any, sure. any disease you have in your mouth. Okay. Yeah. So how do we control that? Fix the problem. Breath will be gone away. How do you know what the problem is? Uh, diagnosis. So okay. you come for a checkup. First, we'll check the teeth. Nothing's there. We'll check the gum. Nothing's there. We'll check the oral cavity as a whole. And then if there's nothing, then we refer the patient to an ENT doctor or mm -hmm. a gastro. Uh, we've been podcasting for 58 minutes now. Yeah. Um, Didn't feel like it, man. Do so. I have bad breath? No. 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 Really? No, really. Wow. Yeah, because I always wonder. I'm like, oh, I probably have bad teeth. I drink a lot of coffee. It's not, nobody can smell their own breath. Uh, sometimes you do. And by the way... Must be that bad. If No, sometimes you know when you feel like you have a bad breath, but you're not so sure? Yeah. If you feel, then you do have a bad breath. Ah, interesting. So, yeah, don't try to... Like, I always feel. Because I drink uh, coffee. No, but coffee, do. coffee, I mean, coffee, while you're drinking coffee, you shouldn't have a bad breath. Oh, I while see. While you're drinking while coffee. While you're drinking. It's yeah. only after. So I keep mean, drinking. it's after and... Oh, bro. <laughs> <laughs> after, and if you're, not, if you're not maintaining, like if you're not brushing afterwards, and if you're not... Yeah. Sure, sure. Gum or spray? Um, both work, but I prefer gum because it kind of also cleanses the surface of your teeth. So gum is good for the teeth? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the well, the, the sugar-free ones? Yeah, the, the ones with xylitol. Sure. Which is the, you know, the Extra? traditionally, yeah. Extra? Yeah. Okay. I'm a pop star, not a doctor. Watch her. Say she's a whole different, different black so I'm black there. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Jeez. She's calling my phone like I'm locked up nonstop. From the plane to the fucking helicopter. Yeah. Cops pulling up like I'm giving drugs on. Nah, nah. I'm a pop star, not a doctor. She's calling my phone. Like I'm locked up non from the plane to the fucking helicopter Yeah, cops pulling up Like I'm giving drugs, ah, uh, nah, nah I'm a pop star, not, not a doctor, doctor. <laughs> Is a doctor? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm both <laughs> <laughs> A pop star and a doctor This is your song Alright Man, Drake is insane Love that Drake is insane Love that Jesus, you know I, I, uh, I, yeah, I don't like telling people this But I spent three days with him Oh, no way. Yeah, everyone's like, and like, when me and my ex girlfriend, we broke up. She was we all sad. 
and we were just like, okay, well, thank you for everything. Thank you for everything you've taught me. And we'll do it. Eight years we're together, right? Yeah. Eight years we're engaged. Yeah. Oh, wow. We're having, yeah, we're having a real emotional conversation about things. That's you. a tough one, man. And then, uh, and then she, goes, uh, she goes to me, I still remember this. She goes to me, think about the bright side. You've got more, you, you, you'll find a new girl to tell the Drake story. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh well yeah so I'd want to know more about that yeah, yeah. Well, we, we, we own a karaoke bar in Australia oh, nice. and uh, we, we, we have like 20 something girls that work for us okay so when Drake came to our city to do a show he was there for three days and I saw Chubbs his best friend and I was like yo do you guys need anything he's like man we need some girls I was like yeah I'll, I'll get you girls so we made a phone call and we had all the girls come and and uh, they partied together and then I will with them and then the next day we're together we were at the hotel all gentlemen all of them are such great guys really they're all such great guys gentlemen really classy interesting really classy yeah we've got photos of all of them and everything but it's really nice guys like they would just take off their chain and put it around this girl's neck are she- you guys still in touch you know he said to me come with us to Melbourne Okay. Because they wanted us to go with them. Nice. I think they just thought we'd go out and bring them girls or something like that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and I, I have um, Preem's number. Um, P. Rain, his name was that back then. Now it's Preem. His, his other best friend is a rapper. Uh-huh. Um, but I never, like, yeah. And my friend, I went to Toronto not longer. And my friend's like, should we, like, should we knock, knock on his door and see if they remember you? Yeah. I was like, they, they might do it three days. But, I mean, they've got a crazy life. Yeah, they're they always on the go, man. They meet, exactly. They thousands of people. I don't think they remember this the guy we spent three days with in Australia. Like, they, they, we had a really good time. And they were just like, I fit in with them really well. Like, after the concert, they actually have a party at the backstage, right? Uh-huh. So, <clears throat> we went there. And then... Uh, Chubbs goes Drake's coming right because Drake was taking a shower after the concert and everyone started cleaning all his friends started cleaning it's like they can't really be comfortable around him it was weird and then I started cleaning with them right <laughs> so, so I was kind of like in the team with them and then I, when we were leaving I was organizing things our vans and then we were jumping in the car together going to the after party so I think I, I like meshed with their team really well and they said to me come to Melbourne and I was like no uh, I oh, should have uh, so, yeah. well, interesting yeah what kind of celebrities do you typically work with? Well, honestly, uh, A to Z, everything. Um, we've got some uh, singers, actors, uh, politicians, uh, religious men, um, YouTubers. YouTubers, yeah. Yeah, a lot of YouTubers. Yeah. The whole gang. All of them? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, they're all amazing guys, honestly. Yeah. Uh, Mo Vlogs, yeah. Money Kicks, yeah. uh, Lana, uh, Lana Rose, um, uh, who else? I've got, uh, I've got others from social media, Saigon yeah. Yachan, yeah. uh, 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 Yemen, uh, Ayman, Ayman Yemen, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, so a lot of, a lot of the guys. Uh, who's a celebrity we like, oh my God, I can't believe I, I saw him, I can't believe like, I, I worked on his team. I always answer this in interviews. I love this guy. I mean, yeah. he's, he's like a brother to us now. Yeah. Uh, and he's someone we're always very proud of yeah. uh, as, as friends, family, and also as Arabs. Uh, if, my dear friend, Red One. Um, so Red One is the man who discovered Lady Gaga. Oh, wow. He's a music producer. Mm. And almost every hit song that you know for J-Lo, Enrique Iglesias, Pitbull, uh, a lot of those uh, are made by him. If you focus at the beginning of the songs, they go like Red One or Red One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's him. Yeah. Uh, so um, God, he, yeah. he created all of those uh, songs. Uh, he has uh, three Grammy Awards. Wow! Um, but what else? Yeah, I mean th- this guy. Incredible. This guy is an absolute legend, and he does all the FIFA songs round now, like all the World Cups, all he the songs. Yeah. He, they're his songs. Wow! And the uh, Real Madrid anthem. Oh, the, the, the Jesus! Football. Yeah, he, he did that. So that guy is uh, yeah one of the people I was very proud to work with. Yeah. So he found her and he took her to Acon. Yes, got you. So he yes. is the connection to Acon. Yes, and they both signed her. So oh. she worked with both of them. Because Acon like lives here pretty much. Like he's always. I, I've in and seen out. him around. Yeah, here he's, he's got a house in SLS. Yeah, um, and a lot of her songs. The first songs that came out they they were his and they start off with red ones so poker face no way uh, yeah all of those songs wow. just dance the, those are red ones uh, songs oh i know yeah. red one yeah, i know yeah, now you know what i'm I talking know. about yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, i just as soon as i heard that and song pitbull pitbull always like most of his songs he goes like red one yeah, stuff like that yeah, so, yeah. yeah. and he's arab 
He's originally Moroccan, yeah. Wow, I didn't even yeah. know that. Where does he live? In Dubai now. Completely Dubai. Yeah, he was in LA like most of his life and then he moved to Dubai. But isn't business for them in LA? Uh, well, now that he got signed by FIFA, it's... Uh, oh, I see. So he's like, focusing on that now. Yeah, I mean, that's like a huge thing. So he's officially signed like by FIFA. I, can't, I yeah. don't know the exact position, but yeah. like he's handling the entertainment side of FIFA. Sure, yeah. sure. Got yeah, Interesting. You, you can obviously as a dentist work anywhere. Why, why do you choose Dubai? Why Dubai? Why Dubai? Because you got your degree in Germany. No, uh, in my London. undergrad was here, postgrad in London. Yes, oh, London. and okay. uh, Germany was just a thing I did for back and forth for a while. Okay. Um, Which city in Germany? In uh, Aachen. Do you speak German? No. Okay. No, it's uh, an English course. I was in Germany last week. Oh really? And, How uh, was yeah. that? I was in Berlin. Weird city. Berlin. Berlin. I think Europe is Europe. Berlin is just yeah. Berlin. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, yeah. Berlin Not is a, a big bit fan. strange. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Not a big fan. Yeah, very strange. Yeah. Uh, why Dubai? Just give me a better place. I'll mm. go there. True. Yeah. Well said. We'll, we'll yeah. all go to any better place. There isn't a better place than Dubai, man. Yeah. I mean, you've got it all. It's, um, you know, uh, civilization, the, yeah. the, the culture, the people, the government, man. On yeah. Top of all, like, I, I don't think there's uh, a government or a set of rulers that can handle a place like we have in the yeah. city. And everyone's just living together, like we're all happy together. You've got all religions, almost 180 or 190 uh, nationalities yeah. living together. Safest place in the world. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, not just as in safety as in your money or like having things stolen from you, but like women can walk at night yeah. in the streets comfortably. Your kids can go to school by themselves. Mm. We are feeling very safe about that. I mean, so, I agree with you. Dubai is an incredible place. You know, it's it's given so much to me and even foreigners that aren't Emirati. They've given so much. They're so generous with their opportunities and everything. And you know what? I, I always look back, like if you look back at the origin of how this thing happened, exactly. look at the rulers of this place. Man. Exactly. I mean, uh, I mean, bless them all. But for me, like it's personal. Like I have someone that I look up to mm. is Hayne Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. Mm. This man is like a legend in every way. Like the way he manages things, the way he managed to go on and um, kind of keep up with with everything changing, keep up with the world mm. to an extent that now the world is trying to keep up with him. Yeah. Correct. You know? In so quickly. And in no time. So quickly. And you know when they say lead by example? Yeah. That's Mohammed bin Rashid. Yeah. You know, like we've, I was born and raised here. So I've, mm. I've, apart from what we see on TV, I've heard also stories from like my friends that work in the government and they've yeah. seen him in action. Um, wow. Yeah. And, and uh, I'd love to see him in action. Uh, well, we all do. Uh, but no, you hear stories, you see like even the public things. I mean, what ruler, uh, you know, like for example, remember when he posted uh, the mystery shopper that went to the uh, post office? No. So uh, tell just, me the story. No, I mean uh, he w posted on his Twitter uh, a photo of uh, you know a, a government uh, official department, okay, uh, with a huge queue, okay, and it was very crowded and packed. And then he posted the photo from that place because there was a mystery shopper there, like mm -hmm. he sent him. And he was like, uh, this, is, uh, this is not us and this does not represent us. This is unacceptable. And I think he gave them like a, a week or a couple of days to fix things up. Wow. And then afterwards, that place, like if you walk into it, it's just like perfect, you know? Perfect. And every year how he selects like the top five governments and then the worst five. I mean, who would expose things like that to he the He also public? does that. Yeah. The worst five yeah. too. Top, top five Ooh. and the worst five. And... Uh, it's it's uh, incredible. It's incredible the way he, he runs things incredible. here. It's it's all out there. Everyone sees him. Uh, there, uh, I mean, I don't know. With all respect to all countries and rulers around the world, but I don't think we'd see a president or a ruler that just walks around the mall with his friends. Well, I know. I know. I, I've seen him personally. Yeah. I was. Have you? Uh, yeah, I was in Dubai Mall, yeah. and then uh, it was me, my friend, and one of my friends that came from abroad. We were having uh, coffee somewhere next to the ice rink and uh, suddenly my friend sitting that way looks back and he's like Sheikh Mohammed Sheikh Mohammed and then I looked back and obviously a lot of people were standing up taking photos and then he just passed it was just him two of his friends uh, and I'm not sure if he had security system around him like yeah. it was you know yeah yeah, yeah. it was uh, weird yeah. yeah and he just passed 
And I was like, wow. And then my other friend who came from over was like, what's happening? I was like, that's our ruler. She was like, what? I was like, yeah, that's the, this man over here yeah. is the ruler of Dubai. And she's like, what do you mean he's the ruler of Dubai? Yeah. Where is like, you know, like, 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 why? Where's his security? Like, where's yeah. the system? Why isn't the ball closed down? Yeah, yeah. I was like, not in Dubai. Yeah, yeah, yeah not in Dubai. You know? And you, you go to England or whatever, they see Boris Johnson, like, fuck you, Boris Johnson. Like, it's like no respect, right? Not just about respect. Other in other countries as well, you would see them like literally close down the roads yeah. if like yeah. the cousin yeah. of Correct. some minister is passing Correct. by, yeah, you yeah, know. Exactly. Uh, and here, like we have our rulers driving or driving their own cars around the streets. If they are feeling that safe, why shouldn't we? Yeah, exactly. You know, I saw Sheikh Mohammed's son in the mall not long ago. And he doesn't even look like he's around security, but I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it is. But they're all in uh, kunduras. Oh, you, know, you know the round face, the, 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 he's always smiling, got cheeks. He has a photo with Drake on a boat. Ah, uh, Sheikh Mansour. Yeah. Sheikh Mansour, yeah. I saw him at Jibriani and I said to the lady, I was there two weeks later, and I said, did, did you guys charge him? She goes, of course, we charged him. And he also paid for everyone else. Just paid for everyone. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Um, so... So anyway, I saw him and he had, he had like five people around him and they're walking, uh, Sheikh Mansour and his friends were around him and it was just talking. I don't know if some of them were security or not. I didn't see any guns or anything like that. Never. But, um, no. Never. But I saw this one uh, Chinese lady who doesn't know who he was. I was walking behind him. I was going somewhere. I think I was going uh, right to Arabica getting a coffee. And then uh, this, this Chinese lady walks through the group and, and also hits him on the shoulder a little bit, not knowing who he is. But just she had kids, because she was running around, and he just, nothing, he just turned around, looked at her, like, smiled, walked away, like, yeah, yeah. she didn't know who he was. It, yeah, they, I mean, they, that's, that's <laughs> very, see, in many countries, that would be like, oh, you know, like, yeah. that's weird. Yeah. In Dubai, that's irregular. Like, yeah. the, the, the ruling family is, is around us, and that's yeah. how we feel safe. That's how we feel, you know, very uh, comfortable being in this place, yeah. because whatever they're doing you also have the same opportunity of doing the same thing and yeah. uh, i always say something if we're going to speak about dubai uh, the the um, the regular things in dubai that are available for everyone are the luxuries that you need to pay for in any other country give me an example you're right go go to dubai mall yeah walk around uh watch the fountain uh, get uh, uh, you know the regular stuff you do in other other countries. Yeah. Sit at a restaurant, uh, th- providing the service that you're mm-hmm. being provided. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to get that same experience, watch uh, a Guinness record uh, fountain. Uh, sit at a, a restaurant with the same standards mm-hmm. uh, in any other place, mm-hmm. and go watch a movie with the same luxury seats yeah, 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 and yeah. The, the, in any yeah. other country, you're going to pay at least 10 times the price that you paid here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Very true. When you walk around the mall, you never find, uh, you know, like look at how clean the, the, yeah. the, the, the place is. Go to the toilet, sorry for this, but like yeah. you've been around, you've traveled, well, you know, yeah, yeah. like even oh, the, the toilets, the toilets here are amazing. Are, yeah, and, and, this, so clean. and look at the streets, man. Yeah, like, so clean. Look at how neat and clean they are. Yeah. And uh, everyone is, it's not just, by the way, uh, strict rules. Mm. It's, um, they built a culture mm-hmm. here that everyone is trained to be uh, organized mm. and respect what's been built over the years. Mm. The other day, I was this uh, uh, traffic uh, light and, and you, s- you realize how, how they managed to build this um, uh, culture. Mm. where people got used to this organized world. Mm. They appreciate it and they want to maintain it. And I was at the signal the other day and it wasn't working. Mm. Okay, a traffic, mm-hmm. a traffic light and it wasn't working at an intersection. Mm-hmm. Uh, usually what would happen, a chaos. Mm-hmm. There was no police cars arrived yet. And people were just there. Okay, first lane went for like, you know, two minutes. And then they stopped, like the first three cars just stopped, gave way to the rest. Traffic did not happen. Wow. Like, I, I, I was impressed. I was like, yeah. I, was, I was just looking around and I'm like, wow, wow. you need to build uh, the culture to achieve this. Yeah. It's not about the towers. Yeah, it's correct. not about the money. Correct. It's not, it's you're educating humans. Yeah. You're, you're raising yeah. people. So... I think everyone here was brought up with... Yeah. With There's this. not one thing you can do that makes 
Dubai, Dubai. There's not, there's not one secret source. No, no, it's no. many secret sources that Sheikh Mohammed's put together to make this work. Yeah, yeah. And of course, I mean, it's not just, I mean, it's, it's a whole country. There is a huge vision above yeah. all, you know, all, all seven Emirates are kind of working and in a beautiful way and kind of providing everything that you need in mm -hmm. terms of regions. So yeah. there's the desert, there's the mountains, yeah. there's, yeah. Uh, you know, there's the city life, there's the you know, cities that are a bit more quiet than mm -hmm. others mm -hmm. uh, and suitable and convenient for everyone. Mm. Like I know I have friends that live here with, you know, making 10K a month or mm -hmm. whatever number is. And I know others who are billionaires. So, mm. and they're both happy doing their own thing. Yeah. 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 You know what I love about Dubai? How it gets hot. You know why? Because if it didn't get so hot, I would never leave. Thank God it gets so hot that the city kicks you out and says, hey, there's a whole world out there. Go and experience the whole world. You know what? We all need that break, yeah. whether it's for the heat or not. And every time I leave Dubai, I book for a week, 10 days. Third day into my trip, yeah. I start you looking at the calendar. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. take me back to civilization. Yeah, you you take me back it. to Dubai. Yeah. And then the best feeling, and my friends would know that, even my followers, the best feeling in the world the best feeling ever is when that elevator door opens into the passport control of Terminal 3. <laughs> that white airport, you know, the Terminal 3. The Terminal Emirates, 3, uh, yeah. of course. Yeah, yeah when, DXV. Yeah, when you land in Dubai, yeah. you go down this elevator and then it yeah. opens up and there's this calming, soothing... Yeah, uh, yeah. I love that uh, airport. Airport. And you just walk in and you look around. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't but love it, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I just suddenly feel calm, home. Yeah. You know, needs yeah. in place. It's I don't know if it's home for, because it's my home, so I, I feel that way. But a lot of my friends share, share the same thing. So. I've been here one year and it's my home. Yep. See, there it's you my go. Home. There you Honestly, go. I've got some businesses that are that are not doing as good as they should because I'm not there in mm -hmm. Australia. But I don't care. Yeah. I choose me. Yeah. Yeah. Let the business fail. Like. I mean, uh, you can get things done. Here. I, exactly. Yeah, why so. Not, so. Um, appreciate you coming on the podcast. Thank you for this awesome ride. You're, you're my brother and I uh, appreciate uh, you coming on. Come back anytime you want. Thank you, yes. All right, guys, so this is Dr. Mohammed Naji. We just finished the interview. Rad's had some amazing things to uh, discuss. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned a lot of things. And we'll see you soon. Bye.